Welcome to week seven of Investec Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason, and on tonight's show we have all the highlights from Clifton Robinsons against Bowden Hightown, Slough's trip up to Inform Beeston, and Inform East Grinstead at home to Canterbury. Then the University of Birmingham versus Holcombe, and the league leader Surbiton at home to Challengers Buckingham. In the men's Premier Division, we have all the action as the top two in the league went head to head at Surbiton. Third placed Holcomb hosted the University of Exeter and the action from Brooklyn's Manchester University against East Grinstead. First we head to Bristol for a clash between two sides struggling at the wrong end of the table. Clifton Robinsons had only picked up one point since a win on the opening day of the season, whilst the visitors Bowden Hightown were yet to win and had picked up just three points so far this campaign. Let's join Charlie Broom for the best of the action. There is more. Let's pull in. Well, makes it all the way through and the keeper makes the save. Here is Bailey. And it's a short corner. Moore's ball in. Bounced its way through. The shot well saved. Only had time and space on the penalty corner. Over come again. So it's been a bright start by the visitors. Kept alive just by Moore. Moore's ball in. A little touch. Now here could be a chance. And there is an opening goal. Rosie Bailey. Eight minutes in, gives the visitors the lead. Clifton Robinson's nil, Bowden Hightown one. And just about kept in by Moore. Her ball into the circle, touched on. Well picked up by Bailey, good turn, good finish. Haven't oh, lost the ball there. Maybe need to do some defending. And by Moss. That's ball in the field. Chance here. Shot comes in and Proby makes the save. But the Robinsons need to find an answer in this second half. Making shot. Kept out by Ferriby. Moss with the injection. Thomas from the top of the circle. Thomas keeps it low. And Claire Thomas makes it Clifton, Robinson's one, Bowden one. Five minutes into the second half and the home side are on the board. Let's have a look from behind the goal. Thomas keeps it low. That's a really well taken penalty corner. Bowden down the other end with a penalty corner of their own. There's a little move coming, there is. Here is Mayers, Mayers goes Across the goal, it's a long corner, so it's been saved by the keeper. Let's have another look. As Mayers plays it in, they're looking for the deflection. Might well come, but it also comes off the keeper. Good save. Clifton Robinson with an opportunity down this right-hand side, perhaps. The ball in, oh, stopped on her knees, but the clearance is back to the home side. Thomas is lurking. And this is good work from Moss. Thomas is totally unmarked in front of goal. And Thomas finds the back of the net. Claire Thomas with her second goal of the game. And after levelling on the 40th minute, Clifton Robinsons are in front on the 42nd. Thomas just ghosts in front of her defender. The marking is non-existent. Good work by Moss. But you can see there, she's all alone in front of Ferriby. And it's a good finish to make it 2-1. Thomas and available is 9 12, but uh, Clifton Robinson have come in field. And McCabe, good drive from McCabe. Here is Thomas again. Thomas with a hat trick. And Claire Thomas gets her hat trick. It's a four minute hat trick for Claire Thomas. And again, she's totally unmarked. But credit to her, she takes her time and finds the back of the net. McCabe with an excellent run. And watch here, Thomas, she could have. Go first time, but she takes an extra couple of touches, makes no mistake, and it's 3-1. Bowden, the penalty corner, need to get their scoreboard ticking again if they can. There's another little move coming. Up to this right-hand side, shot comes in, but it's been dragged wide. It was well worked at the top of the circle, but they just couldn't find the target. And Clifton Robinson's remain two goals in front. Chapel. And it doesn't get the ball because Mayers is there. Mayers 
Brings it to the edge of the circle. Jones cuts it out. Jones brings it away, but plays it straight to French. Here is French. French into the circle. Free shot. And the keeper makes the save. It's still there for French. There's a penalty corner to Bowden. I think the shot comes back off the keeper onto a defender's foot. Jones will be kicking herself. Shot comes in here. Good save. Touch there onto the foot. That one castle looking for the deflection. And I think that's gone in off the body of Bailey. Bowden is celebrating. But the umpire has signalled a free out. Bailey saying came off the hand. Let's have another look. Keep your eye on the left of screen. I think it might bobble up there onto a chest and then go in. Moss plays it in. Thomas comes back off the bar. And go and get it clear. There is Davies. Shot comes in from Leach. It's still there. And McKay fires it in. And it's Clifton Robinson's four. Bowden one. And with three minutes left, it looks as if Clifton Robinson's have sealed the points. What a penalty corner flick this is. Back off the bar. Bowden couldn't get it clear. And as Moore plays it back, the shot comes in. From Leach, and there is McKay to finish it off. 4 1. Bowden, can they get a consolation? Playing it round the back. All played up by Tennant. There is Mez, and there is the final whistle. And Clifton Robinson's get a much awaited win. Bowden Hightown still looking for their first victory. It's finished Clifton Robinson's 4, Bowden Hightown 1. Now up to Beeston to join up with BTV with Slough the visitors. The home side were looking increasingly comfortable with life in the Premier League after a tough start to the season. Slough had also picked up a moral boosting first win in the campaign last week against Holcomb. Here we go again for corner number three in quick succession for Slough. Played in, trapped, again out to the left hand side, reverse ball, pops up into the air, not quite away. And it's another corner for the visitors, that's four in relatively quick succession. It's played in. It's out to the right-hand side this time. This is something new. Played towards the goal. And it's up and into the goal. It's Slough that have the lead. That pressure finally told. This is the replay for the goal. Out to the right-hand side. Emma O'Neill. Ball play forward. It's been picked off by Beeston. Forward again quite quickly. Out to the left-hand side where the Bees have had quite a bit of joy so far. In towards the D, flicked up, and can this be a shot on goal? It is driven towards the goal, diving low. The goalkeeper stops that one. Best. It's gone to the edge. It's been trapped and hit first time. Oh, just wide. Good effort from the Bees. It's trapped this time. It's towards the goal, and goalkeeper Miller Welsh goes low to her right to flip the ball away from which she will be involved. It's been trapped. Hanks again slips it back, and it's towards the goal. It's trickled over, and surely, oh my word, it's just wide. Just wide. Sophie Robinson just couldn't direct the ball on target from a few feet away. And uh, Beeston get a chance to catch their breath and play the ball out of defence. More pace this time from Beeston as they're into the final third of the field and into the D this time. And a shot. Oh, what a cracking save. Miller Welch diving to her right to block the shot. And that was uh, involved again. I think that was Rosie Stevens, was it not? Alice Huddleston. Alice Huddleston. Let's see this again on the replay. The players really. Hanks drives it into the goal. Equalising goal for Beeston. No doubt about that one. Carry Hanks. Third goal of the season. So dangerous from a corner. On Apple TV, on the BTV app. So we are on television. That's another good stop. Uh, and to play the ball in is Captain Bex Walker. We are in beyond the end of the game. It's taken, it's in, and Hanks, oh, what a great save by Miller Welsh. 
not only saving the goal, but also saving the points for her team. It's all over here. It's Beeston 1, Slough 1. Ashley Samra said he's grinsted on their way against Canterbury in the eighth minute. Soon after a rocket from Laura Unsworth doubled the lead. Georgie Blackwood made it three for the home side shortly before the interval. Josephine Blunt deflected home a fourth in the 46th minute. Bridget Blackwood finished off the scoring four minutes later to mean the final score was East Grinstead 5, Canterbury 0. The University of Birmingham took a very early lead against Holcomb thanks to a finish from Lily Walker. But the scores were level two minutes later with Sarah Jones scoring for the visitors. They scored another penalty corner through Leah Wilkinson soon after. And the lead was doubled as Sofia Vieringo Savino got her second of the season. In the second half, Philippa Lewis got Holcomb's fourth. Before Candice Manuel finished the scoring in the 51st minute, getting another for the visitors. In the top of the table clash at Surbiton, it was the visitors who took the lead in the 11th minute, with Lottie Porter finding the back of the net. Georgie Twiggs scored for the home side in the penalty corner to level it up going into the break. That meant that it was left for this goal from Alice Sharp to win the game for the hosts. Now we go back to Surbiton for the men's Premier Division match against Hampstead and Westminster. The home side were averaging four goals a game and up against the only other unbeaten team in the division and a Hampstead and Westminster side that had only conceded twice in their opening six matches. That win means that Surbiton now have a six-point lead at the top of the table, ahead of both East Grinstead and Holcombe on 13 points. At the foot of the table, Bowden Hightown and Canterbury sit in the bottom two, whilst Clifton's win moves them up to sixth. Hampstead Westminster coming down that right-hand side. Can they find the ball across? No, they can't because there's some good defending from Atkins. And the ball off-field. He's laid off now, Drayden Charner with an opportunity. Imagine Drayden Charner into the circle. Can he find the pass? Yes, he can, and there is Forsyth. Oh, what a start for the home side. Four minutes in, it's Serbson 1, Hanson Westminster 0. Lovely run from Drayton Charner. And as he pulls it back, well, Forsyth won't get many easier than that. Where is it? It's the ball back. A little bit of pressure and ball has been turned back over and a chance for Hampstead and Westminster here. Oh, that's ballooned up off the defender's stick. But what a finish that is by Melkert. Paul Melkert, seven minutes after going behind, puts Hampstead and Westminster level. It's one all. And as the ball is played in, it squirms up off the defender's stick. 
But how about this for a finish on the reverse by Melkert. Down the back go the visitors. Little aerial ball. Is that well picked up and the reverse comes in and there's another ball that's played up into the air and this time it's Kant who tries to get the deflection but he puts it just wide of the target. It's been a fruitful avenue for Hampson Westminster. Shape to go left and ball played in now is a real chance. Good save by the keeper. Oh dearie me. What a miss that is as the ball is played in. The keeper makes a save. And well, the defender and the keeper are on top of one another, and the ball is played past the post. Lynn is taken away by Gaul. Wins the free hit. Made that right hand channel. And a chance here. Here's Forsyth. Forsyth out to that left hand side. Here is Boone. Boone on the reverse stick. Boone shot is saved. Boone still going. And eventually the whistle goes. And there's a free out to Hampson Westminster. Lovely pass from Forsyth. Ben Boone picking it up onto the reverse stick. Pulls the trigger. Good save. And the corner goes to that right hand battery. And the penalty, or the drag flick, excuse me, through the keeper's legs. And Atkins gives Serbton the lead once again. Serbton 2, Hampson Westminster 1. As we look from behind the goal, and the keeper will want to see this too often. One big stride straight through the gate. They've come from behind once before. Can they come from behind a second time? Here is Melkett who scored that one goal for Hampson Westminster. And it's a lovely run down the left hand side by Melkett. Melkett still in possession. Ball into the circle. An opportunity here perhaps for the visitors. Shot comes in and it's been saved by Seager Green. Melkett with some lovely work down the right hand side. Ball to the top of the circle. Time and space. The shot is on target. And the keeper makes a save with the left leg. Through the corner. It goes to the middle battery. And it's uh, flicked by Guys Brown. And they've got another penalty corner here of Hampson Westminster. Good save. Brown digging for the rebound. Goes to the left hand. Castle and it's been turned in. Was there a touch in there? Shipley with his third goal of the season and Hampson Westminster are level once again. Let's have another look. Goes to the middle castle. Drag flick. And beats the keeper. Brown. So plays it up to this. Right hand side. Now a lovely little touch across the face of goal. And just past the far post. Another good attack from Hampson Westminster. Smith's ball into the circle. Lovely little touch. And that doesn't miss by a great deal. Penalty corner. Forsyth with the injection. Here's the drag flick. That is some pick on the line. Have a look at this. Keepers beating all ends up. But that is a great clearance off the line. Thompson Westminster switched possession over to that right hand side. Here comes the cross and it's bouncing around in there and the ball is whipped across the face of the Serbton goal but there's nobody in red to touch it in. Ball still with the visitors. Hampson and Westminster looking for that go ahead goal. And the Head of the circle, nice pass, chance here! Good save by Seager Green. But Hampson Westminster with another good chance to try and get a third goal. Hampson and Westminster moving down the left hand side this time. Here's Smith. Smith with his head up, still going Smith. Smith allowed to run. Smith, nice little pass. That's a cracking touch. The shot comes in and it's been missed. Or what shall I say? It's been saved, but a great opportunity. Lovely touch here. And it falls, I think, to Crave, is it? That's a good save down to his right by Seager Green. So to 
Move an attack down its left hand side. Is there one last chance? A little spin on the top of the circle. And that's what goes in favour of Hampstead and Westminster. Now trying to attack down this right hand side. No, they won't. There is the final whistle. And the top two cannot be separated. It's finished. Serbson two, Hampstead and Westminster two. The University of Exeter were the visitors' third placed Holcombe, looking to add to their single point gains so far this season. The home side once more will be looking to Nick Banderak to get their goals, having scored nine of their 16 so far this campaign. Good forward by Gray. Truster over the top. Well taken down by Banderak. And Banderak doesn't hit the target, finds the side netting. <coughs> Lovely area ball from Trussler. Banderak one on one with the keeper, but can't make him work. And the corner. Or Holcomb. Comes to Banderak. Keeper makes the save. Ball comes back to Banderak. Who fires in the rebound. And Holcomb have the lead 15 minutes in. Nick Banderak with his 10th goal of the season. Holcomb 1, Exeter 0. Ball comes in. Banderak with the drag flick could save. But the extra defence didn't react fast enough. Banderak makes it 1 0. Great. His head up. And he's come out on the edge of the circle. A chance perhaps here for Exeter down their left hand side. A lovely interchange of passes by the visitors. This is wonderful stuff from Exeter. Now, can they find the finish? Hospital ball is just away. Also takes a step to the left. Banderak with a drag flick. And that has been brilliantly picked on the line by Hooper, I think it is. Have a look at this. Hooper just flicks it away <coughs> off his side. For Exeter, goes to the right hand castle to drag, looking for the deflection, and it's in. And Ben Cook gets Exeter back on level terms. Three minutes in to the second half. What a start to the second half by the visitors. Hooper looking for the deflection, and it's brilliantly done by Cook. This is back underway. Being pegged back. Webster, nice skill from Webster. Webster still going, and Exeter could be undone here. Here come Holcomb, here is Banderak. Can he make it to one? No good stop on the line, it's still alive. Oh my word, it's in. Field makes it 2 1, and Exeter will level for what? 15 seconds. What a disastrous restart from the visitors. But Holcomb won't care too much. They're back in front. Lovely skill down the right hand side by Webster as he feeds it in. Well, it's a two-on-one situation at the back for Exeter. And just here, I thought Banderak's first touch might just have let him down. He gets the shot away. It's stopped by Hooper. Good advantage from the officials and a fine finish to make it 2-1. Another the corner. Goes to the right-hand castle. Shot comes in. Well saved. It's still alive. And battling our Exeter. And it's gone against them. It's gone against the visitors. Let's have another look. Keeper with the drag flick, Keeper with the save, didn't quite fall for sweet. There's a foot in there somewhere, is that? The ball under the shoulder by Winter, just cleared as far as Carter Keel. As they go around the back, there's Hooper, to the right hand side. Nice stuff from Exeter Butler playing it in, here's a chance for Ferguson, Ferguson with a shot! Oh, and they're back on level terms for a second time. James Ferguson with his second goal of the season. Holcomb 2, Exeter 2, and we have 22 minutes left to play. It was really well worked by the visitors. And the ball in from Butler. Found Ferguson. Okay, a little lucky, but take nothing away from the finish. Sliding it under the keeper. Robbins plays it forward. That's this right hand side for Holcomb. No nice work. Is still going. There is Banderak. Banderak with a shot. Oh, it's gone in. Banderak with a second goal of the game. Makes it Holcomb three, exit for two. And did he really get hold of the shot? Let's have a look as the ball comes to him at the top of the circle. And they get a little lucky in getting it to Banderak. He stops, turns, and I 
think the keeper's just deceived by the top of the shot. And playing it in. Well, a chance here, perhaps. Oh, good shot, good save. Dupre, I think it is, with the shot. And the keeper makes a good stop. Foreman throwing the left foot across to it. Penalty corner. Goes to the right hand castle. Hooper with the little turn. And there's another penalty corner coming. And it's all hands to the pump for Holcomb. As the shot from Brummel, or the flick from Brummel is well saved. So is there to be last moment drama? Another penalty corner. Hooper with a drag flick. Did that get the foot of Robbins? Play on, save the officials. And Holcomb is celebrating, but it's another penalty corner. It did hit Robbins on the bottom of the right foot as he ran number one. Have a look here. Just look at Robbins' right foot there, off his stick onto his foot. And uh, no advantage on the reverse stick for Hooper. Third penalty corner in a row. Can they make it count? Up to the right-hand side. Oh, they're looking at the deflection again. It's gone in, but it's been overruled. Exeter is celebrating. But Holcomb have the win. The goal has not been allowed. They're looking for the same routine. Well, it's hard to tell from that angle of it. Hand, stick, body, arm. Either way, the officials say it's not a goal. And Holcomb hang on for the win. Final score, Holcomb 3, University of Exeter 2. Brooklyn's Manchester University got the opening goal against East Grinstead for Andrew Jackson in the 16th minute. The lead lasted until just before the break. There were no further goals until a dramatic final 10 minutes. First Andy Piper put the visitors ahead from open play. Before Richard Slater equalised just a minute later. Samad Suleiman must have thought he'd won it for East Grinstead when he converted in the 68th minute. But once more, Brooklands went up to the other end and immediately scored through Thomas Russell, meaning the points were shared. The points were also shared as Wimbledon hosted Beeston. Peter Small put the home side ahead in the first half before goals from Joe Sharp and James Albury put Beeston ahead. But Ben Tibble's first goal of the season meant the final score was 2-2. The final match of the weekend also ended up level as Seven Oaks and Reading played out a goalless draw. So the table looks like this. Surbiton and Hampstead and Westminster are level at the top, just ahead of Holcombe, with Beeston rounding out the top four. The point for Seven Oaks lifts them off the bottom of the table. That's all for this week. Join us again next week for another Investec Monday Night Hockey.